shall we? What day is it? Could you please tell me? What day is it? I'm confused, you see. Is it Sunday? No. Is it Monday? No. Is it Tuesday, Blue Day, Better Way, Tuesday? No, 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 no. Is it Wednesday? No. Is it Thursday? Shut up. Is it Friday, Saturday, Better Way, Saturday? Uh, maybe it's tomorrow and maybe it's not. Maybe it's yesterday. Now, from the apocalypse, it's his basement, it's his rules, it's his game show. Who runs Barter Town? He runs Barter Town, Devin Pike! <laughs> Thank you, Pigman. As always, it's, um, it's interesting to have you introducing the show. Um, it, it may be an honor, I'm not exactly sure. Welcome to, Un to Universal Remote, my name is Devin Pike. Thank you very much for being here here and being a part of our amazing Monday and Thursday night excursion and diversion. Um, if you're watching on a, a YouTube window that doesn't have the chat, go ahead and click through to the full YouTube page because you're going to want to play along. And to do that, you need the chat window over on the side or on the bottom if you're playing on your mobile device. Here's how this works. We have three channels worth of questions. Each channel has three questions in it. We take a break at halftime, we tabulate the scores, tell you who's in the top three positions, and a second round with the exact same thing, except all the scores are doubled. 10, 20, and 30 points going to the third, second, and first person to answer each question in the first round, and those points double up in the second. If you're playing in the chat, Make sure, well, you have to play the chat. That just said, unless you're just like a bystander watching and because it is going to get insane. Not only do we have um, the trivia, we also got a live visit tonight from the incomparable Felissa Rose. She's going to be joining us live via Skype because that's how this thing goes. We're in that thing where, you know, if I'm broadcasting from my apartment, she's broadcasting from her house. We're two time zones away. 
and I don't even know what's gonna happen. It's just gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. So thank you for visiting. Buckle up, here we go. It is time for round one, and we're gonna start round one with Acronyms of S.H.I.E.L.D. These are descriptions of upcoming episodes of Marvel's Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division, and just like S.H.I.E.L.D., there's an acronym in each episode description that you have to identify. So. Let's get going with question number one. This week, Fitz and Simmons get into a wacky mishap with a skateboard, a bowl of spaghetti, and the original Magna Carta. They decide to blame it all on NAFTA. So, in the chat, you have to tell me what NAFTA stands for. I need the full spelling and description. Not description, just, you know, what does NAFTA stand for? <laughs> okay, and we got two answers, and we're going to go on to question number two, and that is, this week, Agent Coulson tells Trip, don't touch Lola unless you're going to check the PSI in her hover tires. So the question is, of course, what does PSI stand for? And of course, once the question pops in, that's your sign to go ahead and start typing in that answer. All right, we have all the answers for that. So let's go to question number three. This week, Patton Oswalt goes off script and goes full ham on Clark Gregg by calling him a chud when he suddenly remembers that Gregg starred in Mr. Popper's Penguins. What does chud stand for? And we, okay, very nice, very groovy. And people are tapping in that answer as we speak. I love it. All right, that is it for that channel. Let's go to channel number two, the Lifetime Movie Channel or Lifetime Presents. These are all descriptions of made for lifetime movies based on true stories. You have to tell me the person at the start, at the center of each film. Let's go with question number one. Meredith Baxter Burney plays a small town mother who starts off as the mayor of an Alaskan town and finishes as the GOP's vice presidential nominee in 2000, despite the fact that she can't form a cohesive thought or grasp basic concepts of history or geography. Who is the person that Meredith Baxter Burney is playing or portraying in this Lifetime movie? And remember guys, don't put in your answer until you see it come up in the chat. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, question number two. Sorry, I had to take care of a little business there. Meredith Baxter Burney plays a pluckish Polish physicist who, and chemist. Yeah, try saying that three times fast. Who, despite all odds, discovers a new radioactive element called polonium and then learns that the reason that she's glowing is not because she's pregnant. Who is the person Meredith Baxter Burney is playing in this Lifetime movie? All right, and then question number three. All right. No, you go away, you go away, and you go up. This Lifetime movie stars Meredith Baxter Burney and Hector Elizondo as members of the most powerful Mormon family of the 70s. They not only had their own weekly TV variety show and several gold records that were a little bit country, and a little bit rock and roll. The question is, who are Meredith and Hector playing in this film? Did I kill that off? I'm sure I killed that off. 
Okay, I gotta do that thing. Then I gotta do this thing. Okay, uh, that is it for round number two. Let's keep going to round number three. This channel is called I Must Ask You a Question. It's been making 70s porn stars, gruff uncles, and women appear more manly for years. Behold the mighty mustache. I need you to tell me who made each of these statements. Was it the 26th president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, or was it the former director of Parks and Recreation for Pawnee, Indiana, Ron Swanson? So, question number one is... We will get along just fine, though hopefully not too fine, because I am not looking for any new friends. Once again, we will get along just fine, though hopefully not too fine, because I am not looking for any new friends. I know you're trying to, you, you want to get that. All right, there, there we go. All right, that's, that's number one. Just went in the chat. Uh, da -da. We hit copy, we paste there. All right. Question two. Far and away, the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Was it Ron Swanson or Teddy Roosevelt? And there we go in the chat. And if you're answering this one because it's one or the other, go ahead and put the number two by this answer so we will know which one is which and the scorekeeper doesn't decide to throttle me in my sleep. He's not here, but he'll find a way to do it. That's just how it works. All right. And then third and final question in the channel and in the round. The unforgivable crime is soft hitting. Do not hit at all if it can be avoided, but never hit softly. Once again, the unforgivable crime is soft hitting. Do not hit at all if it can be avoided, but never hit softly. All right, that is going to do it for channel three. Oh, I didn't even show you the thing, but there it is. Yeah, that'll work. You saw it. You saw it in the chat, and that's the important thing. So, kids, that's going to wrap it up for round one. Let's, where is my bell? I, I had a bell somewhere. There it is. That's my bell. So we've got a special treat for you guys as we tabulate the scores. I'll tell you um, as I get her queued up. How do we know the question is? I, I say, Jess, because I said it was the third question in the third and final question in the round. If it's not written anywhere, I have to, you guys are all bottle fed. I swear to God, that's exactly the case. Um, all right, really fast. I'm going to go over the answers real quick and we'll do the scores after we bring in our special guest who's waiting patiently smiling as only she can in the in the room um she's in she's in the green room i i think she's having a bottle of rose i'm not exactly sure so acronyms of shield uh nafta was the north american free trade agreement uh, agent colson uh wants to check the pounds per square inch on lola's tires and chud stands for cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers the lifetime movie channel meredith baxter bernie was playing sarah palin then she played Marie Curie, and then Meredith Baxter Burney and Hector Elizondo played Donnie and Marie Osmond. I think, I'd, I think I'd pay money to watch that movie. I think I'd subscribe to Lifetime just to watch that. And then finally, must ask you a question. We'll get along just fine. I'm not looking for any new friends, was Ron Swanson. Far and away, the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard is Teddy Roosevelt. And the unforgivable crime is soft hitting. Do not hit it if it all can be avoided. And I want all the bacon and eggs you have. No, I'm, I'm kidding about that. That was, of course, Teddy Roosevelt. Kids, check this out. I am incredibly happy to bring along our... Next guest, she is a phenomenal, phenomenal person. I've gotten a chance to watch you know, her fine work for decades, and I love introducing people to her work whenever I get the chance to because invariably they will laugh their heads off and be incredibly um, incensed along the way. I have to hit this one button because I'm doing this all myself. That's just how this works. Kids, it's Felissa Rose. Felissa, how are you doing? We are having a party, and the party just got better because you're here. First off, um, I know you're not doing anything because none of us are, but thank you very much for joining us on Universal Thanks Remote tonight. Me. I'm absolutely thrilled, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, first things first, um, we're all getting through this 
uh, quarantine period as best we can. Um, what is your alcohol beverage of choice and how many cases of it have you gone through I'm in the last two weeks? White wine has been white my best, been best and dearest friend. <laughs> I cannot stop drinking. And I read something recently where it was like, oh, the, in 20 years, this generation will have been homeschooled by the drunk at home. <laughs> oh my god um i want to talk a little bit about sleep away camp and i don't want to give a, it, look first things first if you guys have not seen the movie sleep away camp it is a vital piece of late 70s slasher culture and joe bob briggs who is my former boss and your Love dear friend man. um has Love that man so much. Um, claims that Sleepaway Camp is one of the five best films in the genre and loves to show it at every single opportunity. My question is this. Were you a weird kid when you made Sleepaway Camp or did Sleepaway Camp kind of twist you as uh, as you went along in the production? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Um, I was just kind of a, an outgoing, gregarious type who loved to have fun. Um, and I certainly enjoyed myself on that set, and there began my love for the horror genre. So Sleepaway Camp pulled me in, and it's been an incredible and relentless ride, and I'm thrilled for it. You're, you, you, we, we want conventions oh. to come back. We, we miss them. I miss them. Um, in fact, the last time that you and I uh, bumped into each other was in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and that was the last con that I think anybody yeah. had before the yeah. big pause. Um, people have boundaries. Some people have different boundaries. You have this cloud of people who kind of follow you like little baby ducks when you go from from room to room. And I'm 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 just hoping that I'm hoping what the answer is on this is right. Do people maintain that respectful distance or every now and then do you have to get people like Matt Osborne to beat him over the head with a stick? How much we love Matt and Sam Osborne. Um, no, I am so grateful, so thankful to live amongst this beautiful community of friends. Um, I am just grateful and I will, oh, there's no boundaries, none in my life. It, you know, I just love love. I love life. Come hang with me. All of my best friends are from the conventions. And that's, you know, that's the way uh, I like to live my life. It's it's a good way to live. I I, I hope that you were able to maintain that. I mean, because I would hate for there to be some kind of incident. Because yeah. we in, in in the circles we run in, there are those there are those incidents where people will just say, you know, I can't, you know, I, I have to start drawing more boundaries. I hope that no, that it's maintains never the case been like with that you. For me, it's always been just um, a beautiful kind of uh, group who I have found, and they found me, and we love each other, and it's. You know, it's just a love fest at all times. It's just a love fest at all times. Fabulous. Um, I mentioned Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, Joe Bob um, was the host on uh, on the uh, on the last drive-in. Of course, he did Terrorvision on TNT, where a lot of '90s fans found him. I worked for him at the Dallas Times Herald in the mid '80s before the cult of Joe Bob achieved critical mass. Um, and we've got a new season of The Last Drive-In coming to Shudder on April 24th. Without divulging anything, <laughs> can we expect more phone calls to the resident mangled dick expert on The Last Drive-In? Well, certainly we have found that there are many a mangled dick amongst the, you know, the horror genre. We cannot believe how many real dicks there are in all of these films. So you can bet your mangled dick that I should be arriving <laughs> on season two. I'll leave it at that. Uh, the last time I checked, my, my, my dick is fine and not mangled, but I, and which means it's going to be that way until November, so we'll see how it goes. I coined the mangled dick phrase while I was on that marathon, and I'm so thrilled for it because it's my job now. 
is that something that just like that came along organically, or was it something that he had done at, at shows no. prior to and just like decided to the trot whole it out? It was organic. I the walked into that studio and he said, "Sit in that chair and give an interview like you've never given before. Just be real and don't repeat answers like you had maybe, you know, online and on other podcasts." And I said, "Okay, I'll, you know, kind of just give you off the top of my head." And we were on this roll, and he was on. We just kind of went with it, and it was really certainly a lot of fun. I love that man deeply. I'm inc- yeah. Oh, there's there's nothing to, there's nothing not to love. I I dig it. Um, I have an idea for you, so stick around yeah, for a second, yeah. uh, Felissa. I want to tell everybody who's watching. Uh, of course, the last drive-in uh, again, April twenty-fourth on Shutter. Uh, d- did you have anything in the production pipeline? Anything else that's uh, coming? Oh, no, you don't lose you. Um, oh, cool. Um, do you have anything else coming up that we yeah, need to keep an eye out for? Terrifier, Terrifier 2, um, which I'm super excited for. The remake of The Stepfather, I just did Step Daddy, um, a movie called Big Freaking Rat, and another movie called Rootwood for Jennifer, and um, Screen Test. Just did all those films, and they're all coming out, and I'm very proud of them. So thank you. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for asking, and Thanks to anyone who watched. Of course, and you've also got, and you've also got the podcast going as well. Are you able to record episodes of that while you're in lockdown? Um, we fly to Dallas typically to do that, um, and we do it in, in one big kind of big lump. So uh, they're all recorded. So that's good. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Awesome. Um, so, and you can see her Twitter handle is Felissa underscore Rose. So uh, follow her, give her all the love that she deserves because she's eight miles of awesome on a five mile road. Um, I'm going to tell you really quick, uh, coming into the break, Shannon Hatcher is in third, Desiree Owens is in second, and Knox Blakely is still in the lead, but Knox, you cannot be the smartest person on the internet for two shows running, so I may have to make an executive (laughs) call, or you may have to get dumber for a little bit. Um, You know, I had Shudder, I mean, in your honor, I had Shudder listed, Felissa, as our next channel how about I just send you the questions? And then, I mean, while I've got you, do you mind reading the questions for the, for the next I round? I would love it. I would love it. Yeah. Well, guess what, kids? I am talking about Shudder. Uh, with so many movies and series from the genre, there's something for every horror fan out there, from modern thrillers to mangled dick classics. Let's see how well you know your gore delivered by Felissa Rose. Felissa, give me. Oh, hey, puppy. Oh, the puppy. Oh, got some questions. Oh, sugar. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, let's go with question number one. Question number one. In John Carpenter's classic Halloween, Michael Myers keeps coming back to the little podunk town to finish what he started with his sister, Laurie Strode. What is that town's name? Comes with music. And <laughs> I have always thought that I need to put a music bed in here while I'm waiting for people to get it in and answer it. And, and, and now I have to because Felissa has decreed it, so, so shall it be. Okay, got one okay. right answer. Okay. Got two right answers and three. All right, Felissa, question number okay. two. Question number two. Okay. In Train to Busan. And it's animated sequel, Soul Station. What's the problem it's lucky passengers have to deal with? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to put a music bed in here now. I, I see how this is going to be. Hey, any look. I am not kidding. Anytime you oh. want to pop on, if you're bored, if, if I, I'm serious. You just, I mean, you've already got my, uh, you've got my uh, Facebook yeah, handle. So it's time for us to Thank start you. working together. Thank you. All right. Question the number Canadian three. Canadian tale of two redhead sisters two and werewolves spawned two sequels, but as with most horror films, they should have stopped while they were ahead. What was the name of the brilliant? Original. It really is one of my favorite yes. films, by the way. If you, if, if you, yeah, know, mine yeah. Too. yeah, mine too. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Desley, it's not Twilight for the love of God, woman. Oh, I almost want to take ten points off you for that. <laughs> I love you. You're great. Okay, that is it for the round. 
Once again, Felissa, thank you so much for being a guest with us tonight. I am so happy you were able to pop on. Thank you for having me. Thanks to everyone. And be well, stay healthy, and I love you. I'll see you soon. You love you too. Thank Stay you. safe. Be, I'll talk too. to you soon. Bye. The amazing Felissa Rose, ladies and gentlemen. I could not be more thrilled that she was able to pop on with us. And now that I know that the technology works, we'll have more of them on here in a bit. All right. Um, we've got the answers in for that round. Let's do round number, I'm sorry, channel number five. That is Holy Batman, Batman. Uh, in the 1966 Batman TV series, Robin was known to use a catchphrase of Holy blank, Batman! I'm going to ask you with some questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to answer as Robin. So if I asked you, what would Robin say if he saw his favorite member of Kids in the Hall? You would type your answer as Holy Dave Foley, Batman! Here's the trick. I need you to type the whole thing. So you can't just put Dave Foley. You have to put Holy Dave Foley, comma, Batman. I may take off points if you don't put the exclamation mark at the end. I'll, I'll leave that to the judge's discretion. You ready? Here we go. Question number one. What would Robin say to Batman if... Oh, yep, there we go. What would Robin say to Batman if he saw his favorite member of kids and... Nope. If he just got a date with Academy Award winning star of Girl Interrupted... Once again, what would Robin say to Batman if he just got a date with the Academy Award winning star of Girl Interrupted? All right. There we go. And number two, what would Robin say to Batman if the Joker dumped both of them into a dumpster of small pasta envelopes containing ground meat, cheese, or vegetables? Once again, what would Robin say to Batman if the Joker dumped both of them into a dumpster full of small pasta envelopes containing ground meat, cheese, or vegetables? Because I have forced you to type, and because some of you are... I'll accept that. That's nice. All right. And then finally, question number three in this hell round. What would Robin say to Batman if Batman was raving about Sean Penn's performance in Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Once again, what would Robin say to Batman if the Joker dumped both of... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm going back. What would Robin say to Batman if Batman was raving about Sean Penn's performance in Fast Times at Ridgemont High? All right, we've got all those in. Let's do the final channel of the evening. That, of course, is everyone's favorite, the Rule 34 channel. Thanks to the internet, you can finally live out that childhood fantasy that you had about Carmen Sandiego or Dan Cortez just when you figured out how your junk actually worked. I'm going to give you the name of three porn titles. Three porn parody titles. Actually, I have to do it that way. Uh, this is going to be fun because I didn't realize I have to do it this way. Oh, that'll work. Yes, that. We do that, then we do this. All right, I'm going to give you three adult titles. You're going to tell me which one is real. This is question number one. Which of the following adult titles based on a sci-fi show was released in 1993? Was it? Star Trek Deep Space, I'm sorry, Star Trek Balls Deep Space Nine, Quantum Deep, or Battlestar Galacticaca? Once again, was it Star Trek Balls Deep Space Nine, Quantum Deep, or Battlestar Galacticaca? All right. This is one you're not going to be able to Google. And if you did, I think it might kick over some kind of a, a State Department list. Question number two. Which of the following adult titles based on a classic sitcom was released in 1998? Was it The Horny Mooners, The Dixon Dykes Show, or I Love Lucy Long Time? Once again was the real title The Horny Mooners, The Dixon Dykes Show, or I Love Lucy Long Time? Mm 
I'm giving you a second to ponder that over. I'm loving the chat room right now. So very happy. No, spelling does not count on this one, Lisa. That's a very good question. And no, spelling does not count on this one. And Shelly, you can't guess all of them. That's just rude. All right, question number three, the final question of the evening. Which of the following adult titles based on an Oscar-winning film was released in 2014? Is it Brave Hard On, The Spurt Locker, or One Flew Over the Cuckold's Nest? I should have kept Felissa on for this one. Now that I think about it, I probably should have kept her on for this. She would have dug it. Once again, Brave Hard On, The Spurt Locker, or One Flew Over the Cuckold's Nest? All right, that is going to wrap it up for the third and final channel in round two. And we're going to cut off scoring at that point. So, Woody, don't take any more answers. Number one. Number two, thank you to every single person who played along through the course of this. This has been a fun show to do and so amazing to have, you know, the live interview with Felissa Rose. And we're going to have more people on. If there's somebody who you want to see and you have a personal connection to them, let me know what it is. Because that's how I've got to do this thing. I have to, you know, use whatever connections I have. Um, somebody emails you and says, hey, I'm doing this live chat show thing. You want to be on an interview? And yeah, whatever. I'd rather sit here and make coffee. Um, all right, so we'll go back and recap the answers and tell you who the smartest person on the internet is for the evening. Uh, Haddonfield, Illinois was the town visited most by Michael Myers in Halloween. Train to Busan and Soul Station dealt with zombies. And Ginger Snaps is one of my favorite, favorite horror films with two redheaded sisters and lycanthropy or lycanthropy, lycanthropy. I don't really know how to say it properly and I can barely talk as it is. In Holy Batman, Batman, the award-winning star of Girl Interrupted, of course, of course, was Holy Angelina Jolie Batman and we did accept Holy Jolie Batman. Um, the Small Pasta Envelopes was Holy Ravioli Batman and... Sean Penn's performance in Fast Times at Ridgemont High was Holy Spicoli Batman. Rule 34, the correct titles were Quantum Deep, The Horny Mooners, and One Flew Over the Cuckold's Nest. Although, honestly, I think that all of those films should be made at some point. So, let's look at the scores. Oh, man. So, we had a total of 47 people who finished with points tonight. First off, congratulations and thanks to every single person who is playing, and we want to see you back again next week. Third place, Jennifer Ackerson. Well done. Nicely played. Um, Knox Blakely coming in second organically. I didn't even have to cheat with it. Knox came in second, and then 10 points, I'm sorry, no, a whopping 70 points ahead of Knox. Shannon Hatcher, you are the smartest person on the internet. You get to carry that around with you through the weekend. You get to be the smartest person on the internet all the way through until Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, where we will have another fantastic version of Universal Remote. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you so much for being on the chat. You guys are making this incredibly as bearable as it can be. I'm cooped up in this apartment, and you're not trapped in here with me. I am definitely trapped in here with you. Stay safe. Be kind. Don't be a dick. All right? I want to see you guys back again soon, and I want to see you back again often. We'll see you again at universalremote.tv. Make sure you follow the YouTube channel for Just Devin. That's me. And I will see you guys on Monday night. Cheers, and I love you.